Hey guys, welcome back. Since we're literally days away from Elon unveiling the new Mars colonization plan, obviously I'm super excited about it, and I'm sure most of you guys are too. So I thought now would be a good time to warm up a little bit and take a look at the other Mars colonization plans proposed. So I'm Lei. The first one is a no-brainer. Let's start with NASA. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. NASA has a long list of legacies. First Mars flyby, first soft landing on the moon, first manned mission to and back from the moon. It was once the single most important agent of humans' effort to explore the stars. This time, NASA's plan is even more ambitious is to set up a permanent base on Mars. The plan was debuted in 2015 and revised a few months ago, so there are a few changes to the plan. I'll bring it to you guys in this video, and you get to know how detailed and grounded the plan is. Let's start with the vehicles first. The vehicle responsible to send human to Mars is called the Space Launch System. The Space Launch System developed is one of the most powerful rockets in the world. It took NASA over six years and around $10 billion to build, and it has a thrust equivalent to that of Saturn V. Throughout its lifetime, it will have multiple variations for different purposes in the space. There will be Block 1A, Block 1B, Block 2 versions of the vehicle. Each is an upgrade to the previous version to accommodate different stages of the space exploration mission. I'll come back to this later in the video. The other part of the rocket that is extremely important is of course its spacecraft, Orion. Later versions of this vehicle are going to take astronauts to Mars. With a diameter of 5 meters, it's bigger than Apollo as well as the Dragon capsule designed by SpaceX. It has two main modules, the crew module and the service module. One thing to note is that the EM-1 Exploration Mission 1, the service module is designed by NASA's European counterpart, ESA. Now that we know enough about the vehicles, let's talk about the timelines of NASA's plan. The plan is divided into five phases with three big milestones namely Earth Reliant, Proving Ground, and Earth Independent. Of course, the stage that got us all excited is the final stage, Earth Independent, which basically means setting up a permanent base on Mars. We are currently in Phase 0, which encompasses the activities aboard the International Space Station. This gives us a good understanding of what will happen to human body when astronauts work for a long period of time in space. This also provides valuable experience in operations, maintenance, as well as repair and replacement activities in orbit, which will be essential skills in operating spacecraft further from Earth. Beyond phase zero, we would have crossed the Earth Reliant milestone and entered into the proving ground stage of NASA's deep space exploration. During this stage, we'll continue to explore the validity of Mars colonization with manned mission in the lunar vicinity. Phase 1 and 2 are all in this stage. This is when we start seeing SLS and Orion in action. Phase 1 involves six launches that span from 2018 to 2026. Its inaugural launch will happen in late 2018, and assuming this one works out, the space agency will launch five more SLS rockets. The first one of the five will send an unrelated probe to Europa, one of the Jupiter's moon. Four other missions will each launch a piece of a new space station, Deep Space Gateway, into orbit near the moon. There will be a power module, a habitation module, a logistics module, and an airlock module. Here, the four astronauts will help assemble and provision it. This is a very important step in understanding how human reacts in deep space situation, because in the International Space Station during phase zero, astronauts are still under the protection of the Earth's magnetic field. However, the protection is no more in this cislunar space. NASA will conduct experiments and tests in Deep Space Gateway to confirm once again the validity of a Mars mission. Phase 2 begins in 2027 by sending the Deep Space Transport to the Cislunar Space. Deep Space Transport will be responsible for sending humans to Mars in the future missions. However, in the next two years following the mission, EM-8 and EM-9 will be sent to an orbit near the Moon with crew for around a year to do the final validation before astronauts embark on the journey to Mars in the early 2030s. As you can see, this huge 41-ton logistics is the one that's going to help astronauts orbit the Moon for 3 to 400 days. There is also supposedly an asteroid redirect mission happening at the end of 2020s. However, the mission is being phased out and defunded because it's not considered critical to sending humans on Mars. A 
Assuming the plan had no critical problems so far, Phase 3 will begin from 2030s onwards, which will send the crewed DST to the Mars transit and return to DSG in around 2 to 3 years' time. During this period, all four astronauts are offered no possibility of return, so it's definitely not for the faint of heart. The last phase of the plan will begin from 2033. This is when landing on Mars will be attempted by NASA. Not a lot of information is given to us so far, but I think this is good. We have enough on our plate right now. Let's tackle problems one by one. Knowing both Mars colonization plans of SpaceX and NASA, I can't help but notice the level of details provided by NASA. Step by step tackling every conceivable problem the astronaut might encounter in the space, and hence ensures the safety of our astronauts as well as the accomplishment of the mission's objective. Indeed, setting up a permanent base in Mars is not an easy task. I'm super glad that SpaceX has friends like NASA, clearing roadblocks along the way so that its goals could be achieved faster and safer. I'm also equally happy that NASA has friends like SpaceX, innovating and streamlining rocket technology, bringing us closer to Mars than anyone ever did. During my research, I came across several pictures of astronauts coming back to Earth from the International Space Station. It touched the deepest part of me. I've lived overseas for half of my life and I know too well the weight of the word home. Yet my home is only hours away. I can't imagine how hard it would be for the astronauts how much uncertainty they must go through before they can come back to their family. But I do know, when they come back, the entire world will thank them for their indispensable service for mankind. This is ground control to Major Tom. You really made the grade. And the papers want to know who's judge you where. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twink. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. 